Okay, well, look, you're very welcome this morning. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. I know some of you have taken a little bit of time out of work. I really appreciate that. I know some of you are also, also uh, very lucky to be working from home, and that's okay too. But you're, you're, you're very welcome this morning. Um, and uh, what we're going to do over the next little 40, 50 minutes is just to give you a little bit of an overview um, of what the school has been doing in preparation for a full return uh, for all our second years uh, to school uh, next week. Um, and you will also notice at the bottom of the Zoom, there's a little chat option um, that if you have any questions that uh, myself or Mr. Um, Murphy, uh, you know, haven't covered, Please use the chat option. Mr. Murphy is going to try and answer those questions as we move along. Um, but there may be things that we haven't thought about, um, that you, you're, you're worrying about, that we may not have covered. Um, but hopefully we'll cover everything uh, uh, during this session. So the, the important thing about this session is about reassuring you as parents. I'm sure all of you are concerned and worried about how we get back to school in a safe um, and, I suppose, uh, COVID free environment and that's our aim as a school but I think the first thing I would say to you in relation to that is that we can only minimize the risk as much as we possibly can um, like any like any school we're open uh, we've got lots of connections in the in the local community and all we can try and do is to educate our students uh, in relation to how they manage themselves when it comes to looking after themselves and their own health and well-being and to ensure that they follow the protocols that we will be we've set in place which um, i'm going to share with you this morning um, and just run through it now if you had had an opportunity already we've already posted the parents protocols on the website last night um, now it's a living document and um, there will be updates to it there will be slight changes even this morning um, there's been there will be a change and once we make those changes we'll revise that document um, as we move through the week and it may even be slightly changed before the before next week but the 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 bones of it or the I'd say more than the bones of the flesh of it is there um, and the, you know there'll only be minor changes or minor thoughts because we've had a lot of feedback from some parents yesterday um, uh, some people who are in the profession or health profession, some suggestions and thoughts that they have given us and um, that we are going to try and integrate into the document to make sure that it's, 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 it's a, a document or, or guidelines or like a protocols that we're, we're all happy and satisfied with. But I suppose as I go back to what I said at the beginning is we can only try and minimize the risk and I suppose everyone is responsible for ensuring that we try and uh, keep the school as coronavirus free as possible. The other thing I wanted to say as well that uh, to all the parents and I've said this over the last few days is that like a flu or a cold uh, we don't blame someone for getting a flu or a cold or a sniffle and I suppose it's really important as parents that we emphasize to our, our sons and daughters that if anyone were to get uh, you know a positive test with COVID-19 it's not their fault. And I think sometimes uh, in the media there, there's been an awful lot of blame out there if someone gets it. And I just want you to reassure you that if in the event that someone uh, close to you or someone in the school, that anything will be treated as private and confidential um, in relation to that. But obviously there's no, there's no one's fault in relation to anything. And I think it's important that I say that from the beginning because I know that's a concern that I would have as a parent, that people would, would feel that you know you're you're to blame in relation to something. So what I'm going to do is Mr. Murphy is going to talk about um, the day-to-day -day traveling to school and so on. But what I want just to give you a little bit of an overview. If you've already looked at the document that's on the website, you will see that there's a considerable amount of time put in place by looking at from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Um, and Mr. Murphy will also talk about where the second years are located within the school and how that system will work. Uh, within the school. It does say at the very beginning of the document about all of us are stakeholders um, and what I mean by that is that we're a team, um, the parents, students, staff, we all work together on this 
this is not solely the school's responsibility. This is a responsibility for all of us. Um, and we need to ensure that we are uh, cognizant of our movements over the next week or two. We also need to make sure that we're conscious of our students, our sons, our daughters' movements over the next few weeks. And I'm asking you as parents to limit that uh, over the next few weeks and to try and pull back. I know that over the summer, lots of you have got involved, lots of the students have got involved in extracurricular and, and which is great because they need to do that. But I think over the next few years, we just need to try and curtail that to ensure that students are not putting themselves at risk before they arrive back in school into a system. We can set up a whole system of how things uh, work, but if students are out in the community and in close uh, contact with others, then that's going to mitigate or that's going to have a negative effect, which I don't want uh, within the school. So we're all responsible. The students will be reminded of their responsibility um, and how they're to, uh, I suppose, adhere to the protocols that we've put in place um, through the school and the way that we've set up the school, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about in a second. Um, and I, you know, part of the morning session when they arrive and the second years arrive, um, will be set aside 40 to 50 minutes where we'll be doing a COVID, I suppose you could call it an induction or training program uh, to outline the reasons we're doing this, why we're doing it, and then to, to teach them about, for example, wearing a mask, cough etiquette, sneezing, whatever, all those kind of things that are linked in that actually have been shown by the World, the World Health Organization to limit the spread of the coronavirus if we take simple steps um, which is what we will be reminding, reminding them, sticking to social distancing measures that we've put in place throughout the school. One of the things that I would say to all of you as parents is a, is a mantra that we'd be reiterating with the students um, in relation to if you feel unwell, if your son or daughter is feeling unwell, they stay at home. Now, I, I, yesterday I know there was a, a, a GPs and the Royal College, I think it was, of medicine were you know, if someone has a sniffle and a bit of a, a sneeze and it's uh, something that you're aware of for the last few days, then obviously that's very good advice. But if, you've, if your son or daughter wakes up or uh, shows symptoms that you think uh, that I need to act here, then they don't come to school. We ask you to, to, to stay, to keep them at home. Um, but we'd also ask that you would let the school know, as we would normally, um, it's a normal process, normal procedure where you'd contact the school to say to the school that uh, your son or daughter is unable to attend because they're feeling unwell. But I suppose in, in this particular uh, scenario, we do need to know, um, a, you know, I suppose the reasons why they're off uh, and so on. Um, and again, that is just kind of common sense when it comes to that. So over the last few weeks, um, our, our team of people have been working very hard to set out the school and um, the students will see a huge difference um, to the layout of the school and where they will be located within the school uh, when they arrive back uh, next week. In relation to cleaning and sanitising, you'll see in our document that we've posted on the website, we've, we've, we're, we're, we've, in, we've set up around the school over 65 sanitising stations. They are located uh, in every building, they're in the bathrooms, they're in entrance and exit points, uh, and we're, we're looking at um, the entrance to the main school via the gates as well. You will also, a lot of people would ask questions about cleaning. We have a section there and about the, uh, regular cleaning within the school, particularly in areas that have high touch points, doors, handles, um, areas where students use regularly, like the bathrooms and so on, and they are cleaned regularly through the day. Um, and then the school is given a deep clean at, at the end of every day. Another thing that we've introduced within the school is we view, we're, we're using a, a, what is known as a spray mist method. Um, and this spray mist, mist method will be used in corridors and in bathrooms and in areas where there's high movement. Um, and that, this particular spray mist, um, I'm sure you've seen it uh, uh, in, where people have been spraying along streets and spraying along um, uh, bus stops similar to that and this particular uh, spray lives sorry it, it kills coronavirus for up to five days and it's also being used in the boarding house and that will be um, done every weekend as well so I just want to reassure you that in relation to cleaning and 
and clear signage, there's stop and go systems for, for the bathrooms. And we'll we've talk all that through with students, exactly what their responsibility is, so that they ensure that they look after themselves when they're in school. And I think one of the things that they need to be reminded is that we're all potential carriers. And if they think that they could be carrying it, and then I think it's common sense that they can um, act on that um, to ensure that they don't spread that. And that obviously is to do with um, in relation to wearing face masks, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. So th that's the kind of introduction that I wanted just to give to you before I hand over to Mr. Murphy. But I just reiterate that we all reiterate that we all have a responsibility here. Um, it's not just the school; it's yourselves, the students, uh, staff, and parents that we work together as a team. Um, Dundalk Grammar School community is a family, the way I look at it. And as a family, we need to protect each other, and we need to make sure we work together on it to ensure that we, you know, that we we have a, a safe place. But ultimately, it's about getting your son and daughter back into school. I'm sure, like my son or daughter, they're itching to get back into school. They need to get back into school. We need to get them in front of their teachers again. Um, you know, we, we, we you know, not, haven't been physically in school for you know, almost six months. And uh, I know that for their own mental health and well-being, they do need to be here. They do need to be in front of a teacher. And they do need to be taught. And yes, there are risks. But I think we can try and reduce those risks if everyone work, pulls together as a, as a team and as a family. So I'm just going to hand you over now to Mr. Murphy, who's going to just give you a little bit of an overview of uh, day students and their return to school. Mr. Murphy. Uh, thanks, Mr. Graham. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so I'm going to begin with uh, the morning. Uh, our students wake up. Um, temperatures should be checked every morning okay and if those uh, temperatures are not reading well well then the advice is for that uh, student to stay at home. Uh, students who are going to be using public transport um, I, I know there's been some uh, recent developments in terms of uh, a 50 percent capacity on the buses for example so it's really important that um, all parents and guardians are aware of uh, the travel situations, both on the buses and the trains. Um, the advice is currently that uh, a student will have two masks, two cloth masks, if they are traveling to school on a bus or a train. So they'll effectively have a traveling mask. And once they're off the bus or train, they um, remove the traveling mask and put on their school mask. Um, the advice is for uh, students to all have a small amount of, um, like a mini bottle of hand sanitizer, where they can sanitize their hands before removing the mask and putting on the school one, and then sanitizing their hands right afterwards as well. So that's the most up-to-date advice we have on, on the actual uh, mask wearing on public transport. And, and obviously social distancing uh, measures will be uh, in place on the buses and the trains. Um, we are uh, letting you know as well that the water supply for students is currently not available. We have ordered um, taps that work from a foot pedal. So once these arrive and once they are installed, the water will be back available for our students. But currently they are not on site, so they haven't been installed just yet. Vending machines, by their very nature, they have a lot of buttons and a lot of what we're calling touch points. So vending machines will be emptied. So snacks will have to be brought in if students tend to use the vending machines quite a bit. Um, once they arrive to school, okay, the students will need to kind of follow new rules. We are trying to uh, eliminate um, too much mixing, okay, um, amongst the students. So we are asking that students don't arrive to school until 8.45. We appreciate that this will not align very well with some buses. Um, so if people or if, if students must enter the school before 8.45, they will need to go immediately to their base room where they can carry out some extra study or maybe get some homework finished up uh, before classes begin. We are asking that uh, the, boarding, the, the, the boarding house, I mean, uh, or the, low, the old Loud Hospital, which some of you may know it as, that that is now a drop-off point for the junior school students only and returning boarding students. So it's a big ask, but we are asking uh, parents where possible to consider using the Tesco car park when dropping off uh, their sons and daughters. Uh, second years uh, will be part of a greater pod, a larger pod, 
uh, during breaks and lunch. And this is a second, and this pod is made up of second years, fourth years, and sixth years. And we're asking all those students, all the second years, fourth years, and sixth years, to enter the school grounds via the RD Road gate or the pedestrian gate beside the, um, the pedestrian crossing there that most people would use after getting off the trains. So once they arrive onto the school grounds, uh, we're asking them to proceed immediately to their base rooms and we want them to come in what all the students would know as the main Harper entrance. So it would be the door that goes into the canteen area. So we're asking to come in there to sanitize their hands and to move directly to their classrooms. The second year's classrooms will be based upstairs in the Harper building. In a, they're all going to be down at the end of the hall together in what we're trying to create a second year pod. Okay, second years may only use the staircase to gain access to the uh, upper floor of the Harper building. They must only use the staircase which is located beside the canteen or beside uh, the guidance counselor's office, Mr. Norton's office. Um, during, uh, during school, uh, where possible, students will remain in their classrooms and teachers will move to them. Obviously, when we come to uh, option classes and, and such, there may be some movement. We're trying to keep that movement uh, as little as possible. So hopefully the majority of students will only need to cross the hallway or maybe go up the hall just to the next room up. So once you change rooms, you will have to sanitize your hands before entering the room. And when you are leaving the room, you will need to sanitize your hands, the desk and the chair before you leave. Practical subjects such as uh, woodwork and drawing, they will still continue taking place over in the Swan Building. So we ask that the second year students would go down the canteen staircase, straight out the Harper entrance and straight into the Swan Building without delay. Um, to assist with us uh, in terms of uh, restricting the movement and the mixing of students, we have staggered our lunch breaks uh, and our, our small break and our lunch break. So the second, fourth and sixth years will get their break at 10 past 11. So slightly later than normal. So they'll get their break at 10 past 11 and they will be back in class for 20 past 11. Lunch will remain the same for this particular group for second years. Uh, first, third and fifth will get their lunch a little bit earlier, but the second, fourth and sixth years will get their lunch as normal at quarter past one. Okay, so and we're obviously encouraging students where possible to get outside during their breaks, maybe remove their mask if they're not uh, close to anybody, if they're not within two meters get a break from the mask. We, we appreciate it's going to be very, very uncomfortable to wear a mask for the day. Uh, so it would be great for them to take it off during lunch. But if they do want to eat their food in school, if it's raining, for example, they may do so, but it is in a uh, designated area. And we're asking that all second years will eat outside the deputy principal's office. So we have an area marked out there for second years only where they can um, eat. Uh, which brings me on to the to lunch itself. Um, our um, canteen provider here have asked that parents and guardians uh, put some thought into maybe registering uh, their uh, sons and daughters for uh, the contactless uh, payment option that we have here in the school to reduce the amount of cash handling that people might have to do uh, to get their lunch. Uh, a lot of our students bring lunch uh, in a lunchbox, okay, which is fine, which is perfectly fine. However, anything that comes to school in that lunchbox must go home in that lunchbox. So any packaging or any food will need to be removed and brought home to be washed or to be disposed of. Uh, in terms of moving around the school, we're asking that you follow the, the uh, not road markings, but floor markings. Uh, people will have to walk in single file. I know it does, it sounds bleak, but that's what we're going to have to do. Um, there are stickers that um, help students um, move around safely. Uh, the bathrooms are, is, is obviously a place where there's going to be a lot of people um, uh, using or going to. So we're, we're, uh, we, we have a lot of signage up there to try and uh, eliminate uh, congregating uh, by the students. So there's plenty of signage within the bathrooms as well, which we're asking that all students will adhere to. 
Um, uniform and PE, I see a few questions there uh, that that popped up. I didn't answer them because I was coming to them here now. Um, we are uh, allowing or, or suggesting that uh, if a student has a timetable PE class, that they may come to school that morning in their PE kit and remain in that PE kit for the day. Okay. Um, in terms of PE and, uh, or sports and uh, extracurricular sports after school, we're hopeful that these will be able to continue as normal. Um, <clears throat> however, showers uh, will not be available. Okay, so uh, students will have to go home to shower and where possible uh, after school sport, perhaps basketball will take place outdoors. Uh, music lessons and uh, after school extracurricular activities. So the extracurricular activities that might take place within the school building, within classrooms and music lessons are obviously held indoors. These will all take, these will always all run, uh, not as normal. Uh, that, that there will be uh, guidelines in there. Um, I know that there are some health and safety guidelines, such as screens and things like that, that must be installed for, for people to be able to uh, practice certain um, musical instruments. But we are making these uh, areas safe uh, for students to be able to participate in. After school study uh, will be slightly adjusted. So on Wednesday, it will begin a quarter to three and it will finish a quarter to five. And the Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday will remain as four o'clock to five o'clock. Uh, we're asking that after school, if a student is not involved in extracurricular uh, of any description, that they must leave the school buildings and grounds uh, pretty promptly and exactly the same way that they came in. Um, after school, sorry, books, locker, and stationary equipment. I know this is a a very big topic and it's uh, we are very mindful of the weight of books what we're trying to do at the moment is we're trying to um encourage our teachers where possible to make available on the boards the ebook version of the textbook so that maybe the students mightn't have to bring in the textbook on that particular day that they can read the book from the board and then use the book that night when they get home um allowing them to not have to bring the book in uh, students or teachers are, are also being encouraged where possible to let students know uh, just what books they might need. Uh, perhaps they don't need to bring in all their science books or all their language books or whatever the case may be. Uh, so we are trying our best uh, to alleviate the weight of the school bags. Uh, the lockers are out of, out of order. They're um, not available uh, at the moment. Uh, we are looking at this. We're trying to devise a system at the moment. Uh, that we're hopeful that we can roll out once we're confident that the system is safe to do so. So we, we do really want to get those lockers open, but we want to do it in a safe as possible, in, in, in a safe as possible way for all students and all members of the school community. Um, homework uh, may change slightly. Um, so homework may be uh, sent out digitally. Uh, all teachers will now align all their online teaching and learning efforts through the uh, Microsoft Office 365 suite. So within that, you have the school email, you have Teams, for example, and you've got Microsoft Forms, which I know that many of the teachers used uh, during the lockdown a few months back. Um, Lost and Found uh, is a very tricky situation. It's really important that students uh, don't lose stuff. And I know that happens quite a lot, but if they do, it, it, it does create an issue for us in terms of, in terms of cleaning uh, and, and a lot of things might have to be disposed of if they're left behind for a long period of time. So it's extremely important that uh, all clothing, for example, is clearly marked with the student's name. And access to the lost and found will be by appointment only. After school detention will continue to run. Uh, hopefully we don't need to use it, but uh, it will continue. And for example, if we have a number of students in the room um, in detention, and if they're from different year groups, we'll be potting them as best as possible using a large room and putting, for example, all second years with second years and so on. Uh, that's essentially it in terms of a day to day, uh, what it all means and, and how the kids are gonna be moving around. This will all, as Mr. Graham said, will be covered on their first day back as well. So students will know exactly where to go. Um, it's very different. Uh, we're asking students to behave in a very strange way. 
we're not comfortable doing it and I'm sure that they won't enjoy it, but we must make the school safe. So we are uh, extremely hopeful that we're going to get a large buy-in from all our students uh, to help everybody in it stay safe and well. Uh, that's it from me. I'll put you back to Mr. Graham. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Murphy, I appreciate that. Just, I was just finishing on what he's saying there, but it, it's going to take a few weeks for us to get our heads around this, as I'm sure all of you over the last few months trying to get your head around uh, some of the things that we've been directed to do over the last while, over the last few months. And I've absolutely no doubt that uh, the same will happen here. But I suppose my priority is to ensure that we get the school open. There are some things that we do need to work on. And I go back again, the lockers and the book situation is, you know, we're not comfortable with it, but we do have to start somewhere. And um, I suppose the uh, not having lockers at the moment reduces uh, contact and close, so, you know, close contact within the corridors. And it's not ideal, but we are going to try and uh, see if we can uh, create some kind of system where students maybe get at least once, if not twice in the day, access to their lockers at a, and at appropriate time. Um, and I am conscious of the weight of books. Someone did ask that um, about the weight of books, but we are, we, we'll be looking at What I would suggest on the first day that your uh, children are in um, is that they, they don't really bring too many books at all because they won't have their timetable. Just come in um, and uh, bring a, uh, a pen or a, a copy or whatever they need so that they can take down information um, at that particular stage. And then hopefully by then, uh, we'll have a little bit more of a clear picture, but it is going to take a little bit of time to to iron out the issue around lockers and books. Now, someone asked about keeping their books under their table um, and having those in the room. Yes, they will be in a base class, and I suppose the pod system works where they're in a base class and they move within that four rooms, if you like, um, and there will be a little bit of space under their desk. But what I would ask is that if they're bringing any books in, that they keep them within their school bag um, underneath their desk. And if they need to take a book out to go to another class, they do that. Um, but we are looking at trying to limit, limit that at, if at all possible. Um, I noticed there also someone asked the question about borders and changing. Obviously, day pupils, when it comes to changing into, uh, you know, coming in in their, their PE kit for the day, that's fine. Boarders will be given the option then to change later on in the day if they have the PE during the day. That's absolutely fine. But obviously, people who are living on site, we have slightly different arrangement for the boarders. And if they want to change later on to the day back into a uniform, then we obviously try and, and accommodate that. Um, and I, I know it's unfortunate the locker, the changing rooms are, are not available at the moment. We are looking at that. As I said to you at the beginning, the document that we've published is a living document as we try to work out a system that is safe um, and accessible to all students, we will of course do that and it will change. But I reckon it will take us at least a month before we get ourselves, get our heads around it and it will take time. But the priority is obviously to get people into school and that they feel safe. And the whole point of today is really to reassure you that there's been an enormous amount of work uh, uh, done in the background over the last few weeks to try and uh, uh, you know, get the school open. So the other little area that I just want to cover uh, in relation to, obviously, we have to talk about school absences. It has been the normal practice um, that if a student is absent, that you obviously let, this, the, the, let us know why they were absent um, or they may be absent. So please, again, make sure you let us know. Now, you can use my secretary, Audrey's email, which is admin at dgs.ae, uh, which is actually one that I'll repeat, I'll repeat again uh, over, over the last few bits of this talk. Um, where Audrey would disseminate a lot of information to, to teachers based on contact from parents and obviously to myself. Um, if a, a student, your son or daughter, or there's anything to do with your own family in relation to having a COVID symptoms, or anything, please let the school know immediately. We need to know that um, uh, so that we, we're aware of it. Um, obviously, there are confidentiality issues around there, but we will um, ensure that those are there, those are adhered to. All visitors to the school, there'd be no visitors to the school apart from the student, the teacher, and we do have some, obviously, we have to have, to have deliveries um, to the school, uh, which is a normal kind of process. But anything to do with people coming and visiting, parents, we won't have any 
outside speakers, anybody coming into the school, um, those those are not those are not allowed. Except where you have to come and collect your son or daughter uh, if there happens to be an issue um, which may be related to to COVID, which we'll talk about. A, a little bit about at the moment. So any visitors that do arrive in the school, obviously we have to take contact details, names and mobile numbers in the case that we may need to have to do some contact um, tracing based on the, the HSE guidelines. So, so the big thing that everybody's uh, wondering about, and I'm sure all of you, which is the thing that I, I, I hope will reassure you, is in relation to what, what do we do in the case where we have a suspected uh, case within the school? How does that work? What does the school school protocols in relation to that? Um, so what what will happen within the school? We've we've obviously based this on the HSE current guidelines uh, in relation, and also in the Department of Education uh, response plan, which I put up on the website uh, last night, um, which is linked to the school and linked to this document. Um, we'll be following those, but I've tried to bring it down into something uh, a little bit less. Uh, wordy, if you like, on the on the website. So it, through our documents. So in the case where a student was to present with uh, COVID nineteen or symptoms of COVID nineteen, and um, the student obviously would would be contacted, or the COVID compliance officer, stroke officers would be let know that a student is feeling unwell, um, and if they present with symptoms um, like a persistent cough, shortness of breath, whatever then we would, we would act on that. And what will happen is that that student will be given a medical mask that we have in stock. Um, so they remove their own mask themselves, they put on a medical mask themselves in the area that we would take them to, which is an isolation area um, where, they'd, where they would remain until they're collected by a parent or guardian. So at that point, we would assess them. Their temperature may be taken. I know that not always, um, People have an asymptomatic, but if someone has a high temperature, it's taken, and then the, the parent is immediately contacted and asked or requested to come in and take their son or daughter out. The student will be located in a ventilated area, and it'll be an area where there's an outside door. So students are taken with the two isolation areas that we have in the main building are actually on the outskirts of the building itself. So they're not walking through the school, they go straight to the isolation room and then when a parent or guardian comes to pick them up, they can exit via that door. Um, and then obviously what will happen then is the parent guardian will contact their GP uh, to see if their, their son or daughter needs an assessment and follow then the regular kind of uh, Department of Health guidelines when it comes to, comes to that. In the case where, for example, if you were requested or your son or daughter had to take a COVID test, um, and it came back positive, then we are asking that we are notified. It's quite, you can, you can work that through in your head why we need to know. Obviously, it could have a knock-on effect within a class group or a year group, and the school obviously needs to know about that. Now, I know tests can take two to three days, um, but if a test was to come back positive, then we need to know that immediately. And obviously, the student then and the family, and if there happens to be another uh, family member in the school, would obviously have to be taken out and isolated at home for whatever period of time, which is a fortnight at the moment, according to the HSE guidelines. The reason we'd need to know, we'd obviously need to act on should that student have been in a class or mixing within that year group so that we can assess whether, which we'll obviously take advice from the HSE about the, the next actions you might, be might have to take. And that could include um, a class being asked to isolate for a fortnight or a year group to ask Fortnite, but hopefully that won't come to that. We'll just follow it then. In the case of a negative case, obviously, uh, that would be our preferred outcome. Uh, but if it has, if it's a negative, then it's, again, the school needs to be notified in relation to that. Available on the website uh, in the next couple of days is uh, a, a school return form. The form will be for day pupils, so make sure you get the right form. One would say day and one would say boarding. Uh, the boarding form is slightly different in the sense that it only needs to be completed once if they're coming into boarding. Um, and again, obviously, if they need to, to return, should they, be, should they have a, a, a confirmed positive or, or, or a case of whatever to do with the COVID-19. I'm getting all tripped up here in all these words. But uh, 
so on the website will be three forms. One will be boarding, one will be um, to do with the student day return, and then there will actually be one will put up for, for staff, which you don't need to worry about. That will be downloadable. You complete it um, should you have to return, even though you might be off for a couple of days, um, and the student brings that back on the day of their return, or it can be emailed into the school to admin at dgs.ie um, just prior to the return. It's just a, a general health form to say that they're, they're, they're healthy and that they haven't been in, um, in contact with anyone uh, suspected or near a, a, a coronavirus case. What happens if there's a, a case at home? That's something we need to discuss as well. If there happens to be a suspected COVID case at home, obviously the school needs to know about it. Um, that might necessarily be your son or daughter, but it may be someone linked within the school, which could potentially um, carry with your son or daughter in the school. We need to know about that. Um, again, it'll be treated as private and confidential. If you happen to get a, a positivity case at home, um, you, you obviously need to come and get your children. Um, you need to come and, and collect them and bring them home and then follow whatever guidelines you've been told. Uh, and then we will deal with the, I suppose the, the other way in relation to classes and year groups, should that, should that be needed. Um, and uh, just in relation to notifying other parents in relation to should there be a case within a year group or class, we're talking about second years here, we'll be emailing parents uh, by email as soon as we can, obviously following the advice and giving you some idea about that. So that is just the kind of outline in relation to how we will be dealing with the case within school, similar just in relation to do with staff, but we have a separate protocol for staff, which we, we've shared with them. <clears throat> Obviously, not every time a child is sick or ill is anything to do with coronavirus. So we still will maintain our first aid and illness procedures as we would normally do. So if somebody was outside and they're um, playing around or have a knock or a bump or whatever, they'd still go to the main office um, for, for to seek to seek first aid if they need be if they've got a sore throat or a sniffle or wherever and they're not feeling particularly well obviously it's not always related to uh, um, coronavirus again there's a system in place where the student would come to the office we've we've set up an area outside the trophy room um, <clears throat> which we social distancing there's a whole area for first aid we've four spaces for students if they need to to sit and wait for someone to to see them, which will be someone from the main office uh, trained in first aid. So that, that will continue. The board is obviously slightly separate. They have their own uh, medical area, which they would, that will be continued to use, which is what I've explained to, to them already. Um, the main office will work on a buzzer system. So the, the main office and the accounts is, uh, currently will be out of bounds to all uh, students and staff. There's a buzzer system should they need access or need something from the office or need to contact someone, they come up with a doorbell system in place where, where they bring the doorbell and then the person or persons would come and see them. Um, again, there's a little bit about information about contacting the accounts office if you need to. There's two email addresses on the, on the document that's published on the website should you need to contact um, them. They're also available, available by phone should you want to. Obviously, we're all about working together and we need to work as a team. And I know there are occasions where parents need to speak to a member of staff about something, maybe a concern they have about their son or daughter. That might be uh, with their year head. I know Miss Johnston's here um, or a form teacher. Obviously, that will continue. We would ask that you'd obviously email or call. Um, you can call them in office and then an email is generally sent to a member of staff to get back to you when they can. Now, they can't always get back to you the same day, it depends on their timetable and what commitments they have for that day, but they generally return uh, a call or an email as soon as they, as soon as they can. Now, obviously, we, there's no visitors to school, um, but in the case of something, an emergency, or something you require to see either myself or Mr. Murphy, or a year ahead, we will try and organize that, but that will be on a limited basis and only in really, um, cases where we really do need to see the person, but we try and utilize other forms of communication, either via Skype or using Zoom, if at all possible, um, when we can. I've already gone through, there's a section on boarding. I met the boarding parents uh, last week. Um, uh, again, that's on the website. Um, the Zoom calls on the website, if any boarding parents are here uh, this morning, um, you can, you can, 
You can enjoy a cup of coffee in one hour of me talking again if you want to at that particular moment. Um, apologies, my sorry, my phone interrupted there. Um, so that's that's up there if you want to 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 have a look at it. So the other thing that I just want to cover very quickly before we, we wrap up, and I know Mr. Murphy is answering some questions as we go along there, just in relation to any any students that have any special needs or need any kind of help or extra resource. Now we do know of the vast majority, but if anyone would like to contact, you can contact Mr. McKinney. Um, and there's also an email there, which he, he is at resource, R-E-S-O-U-R-C-E, resource at dgs.ie, uh, should you want to contact him. Um, and they're also connected with our SNAs as well. Um, there may be, uh, parents out there who know of their own son or daughter that maybe we're not aware of um, to do with maybe a susceptibility um, to do with this virus. Um, and we may not know. Now the vast majority we do know and we are aware of some of, some of those, but maybe just for uh, private reasons or whatever ha happens to be that we are not uh, conscious of it. Um, it really, it's really important that you let us know, please, because obviously, uh, we don't want to be putting anyone at risk. So if there's a is a, is a chance or something that we ha are not aware of, please let us know. Um, otherwise, we, you know, we we can't we can't live in a vacuum when it comes to this, and we do need to to understand um, some of the issues or concerns that a parent might have to do with their son or daughter. Now, obviously, uh, none of the second years. Uh, your son or daughter are all going to be great in school and they're never going to have any issues when it comes to following the guidelines and they're going to be perfect model students over the next uh, uh, year or so but uh, I know and you know that our children sometimes can push boundaries and uh, they can sometimes challenge those boundaries and obviously this issue is a serious issue and it's probably more serious than most things that we've ever had to come across and we have put on the document uh, a little section on breaching covid protocol rules and i think it's important for all of us and i know you as a parent uh, and me as a parent uh, the importance to ensuring that we keep everybody safe but i know been working uh, long enough uh, in education to know that sometimes some young people find it difficult to to uh, know their boundaries and sometimes they like to challenge authority when it comes to that but I think the important thing is that you have to understand that they pose or they can potentially pose a health and safety risk for another student so for example we, you know we will be saying to the students that they shouldn't be engaging in any physical contact i.e hugging or any kind of horse play common sense things that they should be well aware of at this stage um, and that we remind them of again, and following the rules within the school, making sure that they social distance. But if a student were to, were to continue to do that, when you have a stepped approach in relation to how we deal with that. So students, obviously, staff will remind students uh, ongoingly that you know, if they're breaching safety protocols that they'll be reminded of. And I would say the vast majority of students will, will do that and they'll continue to do that. However, if someone is repeating and constantly, and we get, you know, uh, you know, because uh, uh, information that they're doing it regularly, then we we see that as a repeat offender, where we'll be giving them a warning and a letter or a phone call will be made home, uh, and communicated to parents to say that this is happening and that we have a very uh, deep concern that they're not they're not abiding by the rules and they're putting other students or staff or anybody at risk, and that is not acceptable. Uh, I have put in it as well that we are taking a, a zero tolerance on deliberate coughing, spitting and sneezing on someone deliberately. Um, that is not, and that will be treated as an assault. We are taking a very strong view now. If someone is doing this uh, deliberately on another person, that is unacceptable. And they will be sent home for a minimum of five days. And then they'll be requested before they return uh, to have a medical certificate and possibly even requested to have a COVID test to make sure that they're safe to return. I think that, you know students have to understand that we're living in a in a, uh, in a in a world where we have to 
ensure the health and safety of everybody and they are responsible for that and that is listed on it and I they also said on it about the liability of the offender may be liable for medical costs should that occur and um, so it's really important that students understand that and I just want to reassure you that we're taking a no nonsense approach when it comes to students deliberately uh, not following the the results and I can also say to you if someone was to continue that then there might be a difficult conversation with the parent or guardian in relation to saying that you know we've 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 tried we've done whatever there may be a difficult conversation there if someone is posing a health and safety risk for other students then obviously that is something that we cannot uh, continue to have and that person may be asked this is not going to happen by the way but I'm just uh, laying it out there to, to not be in school. Um, just a reminder to everybody, obviously the, we, uh, you know, mobile phones are banned within the school. Just a reminder to remind your son or daughter, which we will remind that the taking of any images or, or recording within the school is strictly forbidden. Someone asked earlier about face coverings. Now, we do have a section on face coverings. I know, you know, I've been in shops often enough wearing a face covering and they get very hot and I, you know, after, if, a few minutes or being in, not that I go shopping very often, um, they can get quite hot um, and I look to get them off as soon as possible. Now we have gone by the Department of Education uh, suggestion, uh, recommendations to use a cloth covering um, and we put that in our protocols. But if someone was to come in with a, a medical uh, covering then we don't see an issue with that. But we've asked that it be cloth covering and we've recommended a minimum of two Again, it's entirely up to parents what they want to do, whether they want to give them more or give them a clean one every day. That's entirely your decision. Um, but the cloth coverings have to be appropriate. Um, we don't want uh, logos, inappropriate words, symbols, anything that we, would be uh, inappropriate or offensive to staff or other students. That is not allowed. Um, they need to be uh, either plain or patterned or as I said, maybe a medical cert. Now someone asked about visors. Um, at the moment we're going with coverings, cloth coverings or medical things. If there's someone out there that has a particular problem using a, a mask, like a cloth covering, or they have some kind of health thing that they need to, to, to let us know about, then we, you know, we will look at the alternative of using a visor. Um, and that's absolutely fine. So if anyone wants to, but the, we need to be informed about that. The rule is a, a cloth covering our face mask at the moment but if you want to speak to one of us or speak to the school we can we can look at that um, so they're the kind of guidelines that we have laid out uh, I when you look at the document on the website we've spent an awful lot of time trying to pull what we feel is relevant to the school trying to give some clarity around uh, our return to school and what what that might entail that's over and above our normal everyday life we have to live we have to uh, it's like everything we have to integrate these protocols into our everyday life and then we move as normal so it's a different normality the way i look at it um, and the students will just have to adjust to a different normality within the school so that they can they can integrate it and then start to uh, get a different normal, which is what we're, we're aiming for. And I know it's a lot for them to take on board. It's a lot for me to take on board, um, um, but they'll get there. Um, they're very adaptable. Um, young people are, are in, by their DNA, are very open and approachable. And I think the majority can get it now and they understand uh, the risks associated with it. Um, but I suppose the important thing for me and the important thing for her for Yearhead, Mr. Murphy, and for their teachers, is that we want them to feel uh, school is a welcoming place. It's a good place. Dundalk Grammar School is, you know, is a family environment. We're a community. We have to work together. And obviously, one of the things that are a big concern for us, and we're well aware of it, is about reconnecting uh, with the school. So the school is preparing a reconnecting program, or reconnecting with DGS. Uh, over the next few weeks, where we'll be setting aside some time to talk to the students, to interact with the students. There might be teachers talking to them, it might be um, uh, you know, a team's call within the school to talk to all the students at once, but we're going to talk to them about their own mental health and their own reconnecting with each other 
in a social environment, not necessarily hugging and, and uh, each other, but certainly talking. And I think one of the things that I've noticed over the last few months is that we've all talked a lot more because um, we've got fed up of screen times and TV and whatever. And I think students need that reconnection. So we're developing a, a reconnecting program, which is obviously to reconnect everybody. We'll have extra form classes um, and things going on and try and make school as normal as possible. We'll try and follow our calendar as normal as possible um, within the, the guidelines. There may be some changes on the calendar that we may not be able to, to work with, but we try and make um, school as, as normal. As I said, trying to integrate all of that within. So well-being is, I suppose, when, I, when we go through and we've talked about the protocols, um, I'd like you to think that well-being goes on top of all of that. Okay, that's our paramount goal. The rest are all just little rules and regulations, but the actual well-being of our students is the key thing. And obviously, second year is an important year. They've had their grounding in first year, and now it's about developing those skills, if you like, in their in their learning, and then obviously their their interactions with their peers. And that that's going to take time. And yes, there are going to be difficulties, and there are students that have been out of school for six months, and that that integration is going to be a trauma for some and uh, and it'll be hard and yes we'll have bumps on the road but we'll deal with them as we as we uh, go along so there that's the kind of thing i just want to also mention just to say that we are we're also planning for contingency arrangements who knows what will happen in the next few weeks we don't know but we have we you know the contingency arrangement says that if needs be if there's a local or a national lockdown then obviously we would move to an online um system again um but I'm hopeful uh, that that won't happen. I think that we have to learn to live with this virus and we have to kind of get on with life and uh, we just try and uh, work with it as best we can because we could be with it for uh, quite, a, quite a while. So uh, I hope this has been useful. Um, I suppose the whole idea of doing the Zoom calls with parents is to kind of reconnect um, with you to say that we are out here, we are, uh, you know, we've been working very hard in the background to try and ensure that the school is ready for you. The students will see a huge change in the layout um, uh, of the school. The fact that they're in a class base is going to be uh, quite different to what they're used to. Um, that's going to take time. But, you know, I just want to mention one uh, person's name um, who has been really instrumental in trying to get the school prepared. Um, and that's Mr. Gareth Collier, who's actually our um, COVID compliance officer, as well as our facilities manager. And him and the team of caretakers and other staff who've come in have worked tirelessly to, to get the school into shape, if you like, uh, uh, over the last few months um, so that we can have a safe return to school. And I hope you find the, this event uh, useful and uh, I know some of your questions have been asked answered what I would say to you is if you've anything that you're not sure about uh, please email us um, we we you know we take the feedback and we you know we will adapt things or try and answer questions as we go along it might necessarily be directly but it might you might see it reappearing or appearing in our in our updated versions of our document but we do appreciate uh, the input that parents give us and uh, that's 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 how it should be so i'm just going to end it there unless there's any further questions and just thank you again for for joining us um and uh, look forward to seeing you all in person uh, at some point and uh, reconnecting as uh, natural human beings do with a good handshake so take care and uh, god bless bye bye thank you thank you thanks now Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.